Hey, this is Bill Crocus again from Hanson Industrial Peoria. Today, we're prepping uh, a rental unit to bring out to a customer. It's kind of a special customer. It's someone in the Peoria area. It's actually Dozer Park for the Peoria Chiefs. So we got some pressure washers, we got some surface cleaners, we got some uh, long hoses. Some of the videos you've seen before, but you're going to see some of it in action today. If you stop midday and it's like you know 80 degrees out the, and the sun's been beating on the hose, the temperature of the hose will range anywhere from that temperature and above, especially if it's dark color. So you can tell everybody to go ahead and flush it for 30 seconds to a minute prior to that. If it's not that pump, although they're designed to take some warm water, it will get superheated and it will deteriorate to light. Shut off. So if you have the switch, or if you don't want to run back to that, you can actually run back to the pressure washer. And just shut it off there. Gates, the quarter inch, are basically for the nozzle end. Because if you're switching stuff really quick and they pull the trigger, you can pop that O-ring out, and you'd be like, well, how am I going to connect everything back up? Because it won't work. This O-ring basically is a, a called a Buna D. It can handle heat as well as it can handle chemical in some aspects. It just gets slid back inside the groove inside there and then you can snap everything back up again quicker. Now we'll go ahead and flush the coil on a hot water unit. If the coil sits for a period of time, it gets flash rusty inside there so you can see that brown stuff coming out. And also for travel, this is a brand new unit. You have speckles of uh, uh, narrow, narrowing, we call it, where they put the two pieces of the coil together, and then during travel, it bounces. Right. That stuff went up in the nozzle. Like, why is it nothing going through there? And so we flush it after we uh, move it around. You shouldn't have to worry about it full tight your gear. And I got this hose, and the same thing we did with the flushing on the other side, we're going to do with the hose. So when you connect up the other hose, a quick couple to it, you're going to want to do the same thing. Okay. So what we'll do first, we'll do the surface cleaner, and then I'll show you the turbo nozzle, and we also got the nozzles and everything on the outside. This is the burner side. This is a wheel lock, so if you're on a little bit of an angle, you lock it so when you're pulling it, it doesn't actually bring the unit down the hill. You got your on and off switch for your non engine. You have a burner switch, adjustable thermostat, and also it's a tack hour, hour meter. Basically all that's there for is to go ahead and um, run the engine at a certain thing and also tells us about a certain uh, RPM and also tells us that when it's time to go ahead and do a PM and step on it, how many hours are on the unit. All Honda motors pretty much start the same. For travel, we turn them off, we turn them back on again, and we turn the choke on. The engine has to run for about 15, 20 seconds if it's sat there for a long period of time to go ahead because they make them run really, really lean for emission standards. So we got to run it for a little bit and then by squeezing the trigger and then after that time you go ahead and cycle it back and you'll be ready to rip. Once you get to that point, if you want heat, you can go ahead and hit that uh, on switch and when you pull the trigger or you're cycling water, once the system's primed up, you're gonna, the burner's going to turn on. And it'll achieve plus or minus 5 degrees of what you set that thermostat for. For this application, I'm thinking 160 to 180 is probably the max that you need. You wouldn't have to go any hotter than that. The pressure from the pressure washer, which is a, a three-gallon at 3,000, it's going to go ahead and do most of the work and stuff for you. 
Your areas that are your bigger areas, like getting through there, the surface cleaner will be your best because you'll be able just to cover that area and go back and forth. Areas that are tight and against the corners where you can't get that inside there, that's where the turbo nozzle will just rip and tear. And so we'll demonstrate both of those. Back on this side, all we have is the other wand holder. And this one has the turbo nozzle on it. And there's smoothers on both sides. So we'll go ahead and get it started. Uh, we'll do some surface uh, cleaner work first, and then we'll switch, and then I'll pop that turbo nozzle on there. We'll go ahead and run it. You want to cool the coil down when you can touch the end of the wand. This wand with your hand, it's cool enough to go ahead and shut the engine off. What they call a turbo nozzle, or not a turbo nozzle, a variable pressure wand, and a turbo nozzle in my hand. This wand we showed in the past videos, if you roll this forward, it slipstreams through this pipe and this pipe. So for instance, if you have that inside there, you can go ahead and clean under high pressure and then get low pressure for pushing the water and the dirt and debris that you get done uh, washing with. So it gives you the ability to do that. We have high pressure swivels here and also here to make it easy for the user to go ahead and uh, clean with. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Hit the like button if you like this video. Hit post notifications if you want to be reminded for future videos. And also hit the subscribe button for future content.